Hey, welcome to the after party. Hi. Hey, we got the four quarters of the U.S. covered. Oh, look, we already got people in the comments. Hey, you guys chat. I'll flip the comments up. Did, did you say four corners of the U.S.? We have Tennessee and Seattle. Uh, okay, well, bilateral relations. <laughs> but you and I are on different parts of the state, Brian. So, you oh, know, so yeah. It's a long uh, state. Tennessee I mean, it's really, really big. You're like the southwest corner, and I'm like the southeast corner, right? <laughs> Fuck, try driving across Tennessee and be like, I'll piss in the next state. It doesn't work. No, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I drove from here to North Carolina. It took me eight hours. So, yeah, eight. Oh, forget the how The Buffalo hard Valley not. rest area is quite nice and it's about in the middle of the state. What? Well, which one? Buffalo Valley. The one right next to your house, right? Mm -hmm. That There's I think I might have stopped. Is that the one that's up on the hill and it kind of looks down over the, all the highways? Yeah. yeah, and it's right by the river. Yeah, I think that's the one I actually stopped at. Yeah, I was going. I was going by, and I saw your your exit that we took when we came over to your place, and I was like, "Ah, oh, yeah." And then I looked at the clock, and I was like, "Oh, another six hours. Cool." <laughs> you should have just stopped over here. Hey, oh, what man. are good tips for sleeping in rest areas? How how about that? Avoid it. Avoid. It's not the best rest because it's just constant. It depends how you can cope with that. Check check the state too. It'll depend on how uh, how long you can actually stay in a rest area. It depends on the yeah, and it depends on the individual rest area too. So the best ones are in Oregon. You can totally spend the night there, and they're clean and they have coffee and it yeah, they're great. And as soon as you leave Oregon, it's trash again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I only sleep in rest areas when I am like, wow, if I keep driving, I'm going to be a danger to myself and others. And then usually it's like a couple of hours. I've only spent one night in an, a rest area ever, and it was in Northern California <laughs> Yeah, in the 90s. My usual strategy for long distance driving is I love to drive in the dark overnight because you can haul ass. And uh soon as i see that well i had a bad time in pennsylvania once i first rays of the sunlight i fell asleep in front of a semi truck and woke up in a flat spin in front of them with the <laughs> going yeah don't do that so yeah first rays of sunlight to bed hour or two i don't care what then then it's like i slept the whole night back on wow just any place flat get off the road get away from the shit lock your stuff up like it's best if they don't know you're in the car, like blankie or something, flip over the top or throw over the seat, sleep under it. Right. And then, and then you're a, then you're a random chance. If there's a person in there with a gun in your face, if you come open the door or not, if they can see you, they can see you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't, I'm not in a hurry to get anywhere. Us. Can you please put question in all caps and we'll answer your question. Yes. Not in a hurry. Brian's got. The I'm, I'm not. I'm not in a hurry to get anywhere, so I don't ever plan on traveling more than half a day. So I don't ever have to end up staying in a rest area. So I'm always. I, I have a place that I'm headed. I have a backup plan, and I have like tertiary plans beyond that to where I'm not staying in rest areas. So that's about what I do. Walmart. The super WalMarts are a great place if you're not in Oakland or Seattle, because now they're yeah. kind of mm, not, not letting you so much, but. You need to bring shit to block the light out of your car because you did want to they, park in the lightest spot possible and right underneath security cameras. Did they yeah. change it back to where you could stay because they were Not just California. allowing people because the lady burned down the camper next to her with kids in it? Yeah, oh. no Walmarts in California. Um, I don't think I think it's, I, I heard it was everywhere, but then I saw people posting that they were staying at them. It's, it's I thought it. Okay, back to my part about when you're sleeping in your car, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be seen. Block out the lights. Um, they right. made. Then, then are you in there? Or are you not in there? So. Well, no, I, she I knew never... she left the kids in there. I mean, they didn't know they kids. were in there. Yeah, so <laughs> they make so you can cut your own, or you can get them off like Amazon to fit your car. But I like the the, the aluminum bubble wrap stuff, the Reflectix, and it insulates it a little bit. So I cut it just a little bigger than whatever the opening is and then push it in there. And I use that in the car and in the camper and it, boy, it makes a difference in the winter. Um, I swung paracord up around the inside of my car. That works. 
from the curtain. handles and shit. So yeah, yeah, all these old tapestries that I got all over yeah. the place. Right. Tap, 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 done. Yeah. <laughs> Flip up some tapestries. Am I in there or not? You'll never know. Yeah, that that works. The bubble wrap works. There's all kinds of like, I have, um, they're like thick foam ones that go in my vents on the top of the RV and it blocks light and air coming in when it's cold. Um, there's all kinds of cool stuff now. So Brian's strategy, don't be in a hurry. My strategy, fly fast and low. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I haven't I haven't held this thing anywhere, but I think its first trip is coming up soon. So is it tall? Is it tactical a told me my I, I won't be pulling it faster than 70. And I was like, how that's big, fine. That's how fine. big is it? It's yeah. 20. Oh, that's good size. 70? It's small enough. I would I would check the tires because our tires are rated to 65, I think. Right. Well, and I'm like, maybe I don't need to go that fast with that much weight behind me, too. Cause yeah. Yeah, yeah, not for the first trip. I mean, once you're used to it, like when okay. we first started. I got, I got everything I own in this fucking rig setup. I don't <laughs> need to go fast. I don't need to go anywhere. And I don't need to deal with fucking people cutting me off when I'm going too fast. Yeah. Fuck that. It's not the first trip. It's all trips. Drive fucking slow. Yeah. Well, and that's something to talk about, too. If we have anybody listening who has not towed or hasn't towed a lot with their rig or hasn't driven a big truck a lot, people get really, really weird when you're driving a large vehicle. Um, and I've noticed that now in when we were towing a trailer and then just driving the truck, the, the 2500, and then now that we have a 550, just driving the truck by itself, people lose their shit and decide that that's the thing that I need to cut you off with. Get in like, front I, of. Because I'm going to Hip and I, is right. The speeding part is fine. The braking is another story. Yeah. So it takes well, longer to stop, too, so you need more space between you and the person in front of yeah. you. So everybody thinks that's a great place to cut into traffic. Yeah. yeah. In exactly. my fucking buffers. Everybody's are. like, cool, look, space. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's I. You, you know, you you have once you realize that you got to take that to all your driving and don't fuck semi trucks over continually. Yeah, one hundred percent. There's stay a reason the left way. in front of them. Like, just stay out of their way. They could blow a tire. You don't know. It's just I especially like semis. I just stay away from them. Like if I got to pass a semi, I like pass a semi, and then I, you know, I'm gone. You know, I don't hang around. But yeah, towing tires. That's the thing that people don't account for. They're like. Oh, can I tow this? Can you? It's the yeah. stop. Like, yeah, my car can go up to 7,500, and this is supposedly 3,000 pounds empty. Perfect. So I'm fine as long as I don't yeah. put my weightlifting rig in here. Right. Or anything. <laughs> and uh, it's probably not going to happen. I don't, well, th so this is, so guys, I'm going to back up a little bit. We didn't like start out with why we're doing this episode. Okay. Um, yeah, yes. I thought it would be fun to talk about like camper living because I've been living in this for about three weeks now. Brian has gone through a whole life transition from homestead to camper and you guys do camper -y things just about like what the nomad life is like, what living in a camper is like and how awesome it is. Like I'm learning a lot about what I don't need right now. It <laughs> like stuff wise, which for me is liberating because I have a house with too much stuff that's all packed up right now. And so for me, it's awesome. And I want to hear from you like lessons you've learned. So maybe I can jumpstart and not unpack all that crap again. Cause maybe I mean, how, how, not in a camper. how huh? fun was it packing it up? I don't know because the holler neighbors did it for me. Cause I had such an insane schedule this fall. They like, came, I don't even know what I own at this. It's just all in boxes. Somebody else packed it. I don't yeah. know where any of it is. And, and I have like, when I'm like, when it's worth my time to go find a box that is, you know, may or may not ha be labeled and get my stuff or the thing, then I'm like, okay, it's worth having that thing. But that's how yeah. I've been approaching it. So now I'm like, I only have like six things in the kitchen I really need right now. <laughs> and the espresso maker. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are, there are, there are, there are things that you just want. Um, and that's, that's perfectly fine, but you really, when you have to have a place for everything and you only have limited places, you really think about what you keep. Um, and then as you have to function around things and you're like, man, I could use a little more space. 
Um, I don't want to have to take out 45 things from the back of the truck to get to the thing in the back. I only want to take 30. So I'll throw 15 things away. Like I'm like, I haven't touched it. I've been on, I've been on this, doing this for, um, off and on for three years, uh, full time for over a year. If I haven't touched it yet, I can, I can go buy it. Like, really, I don't own anything that's that expensive that if I need it once every three years, I'll just go buy it. Yeah. Something I learned from my sister is that there's this really cool storage unit that we can all use. It's called <clears throat> Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. Yeah. And sure. when she said that, I was like, I'm going to get rid of more stuff tomorrow because like <laughs> literally, and it was like in particular tools like the tile saw I've been keeping. I I mean, I'm tiling in the next week here, but I don't need to what? own a tile saw for the next five years because of this one project. Well, you're going to use it now. Then that's the perfect time to get rid of it because you used it. You're not going to use it again. Like, what are you else are you going to tile in your house? Build right. it that project when you want to do that project the next time and then sell it at the end and get a little bit back. Right. That's, and that's, I mean, I sold my tile saw. Now I'm borrowing a tile saw for this one, but that's what I started doing. It's like, I'll just buy the tool and then sell the tool because tools don't store well in Tennessee if you're not using them because of the humidity. Like it, gets, it needs to move to not rust. And yeah. make note of which neighbor has which tool. My new neighbor that I just helped him pour his well pump house concrete. I yeah. noticed bought a brand new Ryobi mixer for that job. Oh, guess what I'm going to start next out at my place? The styrocrete pour. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, Bob, remember that day I took the half day off and helped you get your concrete done? Yep. Yeah, there's no reason for everyone to have a tile saw. I mean, no. it's, it's, it's so, but then, but then how do you lend tools out and get them back? Well, I, I really oh. just, when we, when we decided we were leaving, it was, it was extreme. Like that's from five outbuildings full of stuff, homesteady stuff, tools, uh, project stuff, tinkerer stuff, future project stuff, like junk that I picked up off Facebook Marketplace because it was free because I had a place to put it that I would have used. You know, if I lived to be 400 years old, I might have got around to making that that smoker out of the freezer that I, I picked up the seventh freezer um, because I was going to put uh, cold storage in the ground and I was going to make a uh, freezer or a, a cool tank for processing chickens, uh, man. Uh, so uh, once I, I realized all of someday, I, I, yeah, someday. I, I just exclude all that shit. Like I just excluded it. It was like, yeah, I don't even need to consider that. I just saved myself a year's worth of uh, downsizing because I just realized that in the moment that yeah, never. Uh, but then we went through the house. Corey had a really easy time paring down. She just started getting rid of shit. I was more of a collector. I had like a t-shirt collection that I had over 200 t-shirts that I had been accumulating over the years. I had hats. I had all sorts of stuff. So it was really hard for me to pare down and emotionally let go of the stuff. But once we did and I got in the camper, I was like, I don't need this shit. I really don't. Um, and we got to Texas after six months and we had a dumpster at the place we stayed. We had access to a dumpster and we purged twice more in the next two months, just like <laughs> getting rid of shit. We're like, Oh, yep. Nope. We're good. We're good. So it's freeing. Like we don't have a storage locker. We don't have, uh, anything. We have a pickup bed and, uh, and a 32 foot camper. Yep. Well, then that brings us to the question from Pippin Eyes. Question, RV and tow or tow behind and why? And Brian, you should start first on this one, I think. Oh, man. Um, right now we're doing tow behind trailer. That's what we decided to start with um, for full time, basically. So we had a vehicle. Uh, so we didn't have to drive our vehicle if we wanted to go to the store. <laughs> we could park and go somewhere else or if um, so Corey works full time during the week um, at a, at a job, a remote job. If I had to go do something, I couldn't travel around with her working. I mean, I guess I could, if we were in an RV, um, that's kind of why we went there now. 
Um, we might consider RV with a tow behind vehicle at this point and uh, possibly just a, uh, a we're thinking a lot about toy haulers with a vehicle inside a smaller vehicle of some sort, whether it be two wheel, four wheel, something to where it's now we have two vehicles and a trailer. I'm looking forward to seeing Brian drive a smart car. Electric smart car is the lightest electric vehicle you can buy. I would probably just go back to my, my glory days of my youth and buy a motorcycle. I, was, I thought I was going to do that. And then a friend of mine had an accident. And I was like, God just told me. Not to do maybe it. Maybe I shouldn't get back on a motorcycle right now. On that, usually, that usually happens. That usually <laughs> happens. Yeah. So, Love I don't it. know. Something I don't, I can, I, uh, I got in the backseat of a Volkswagen bug once, uh, one of the new style ones. That was, that was interesting at six, five. Well, okay. So a smart car is built by Germans for German men. who It's, a, are tall. it's so surprisingly roomy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm six foot and a half inch and I can't put the seat. Up. If I put the seat all the way back, I can't reach the pedals. Yeah. They've designed it for tall dudes. You, you should sit in one and see. But just we, I've been, I we're, we're like, we go nomadic. That's the thing is, I want, I want an RV I can drive around, and when I get there, be able to make my own electricity, and put it in the vehicle that I'm towing, and go ninety miles and come back. You so need, Patricia, you gotta, you have to uh, understand how the limitations of how much space you have for power production. Yep, also important. So, so Patricia, yeah. what's what's your what's your thought on RV or tow behind? So we we towed a bumper tow for 16, 17, 18, 18, 18, like four eight, four or five years, all over the place. California, up in the Sierras, Tuolumne Meadows, Yosemite, camping at Crystal Mountain. I mean, we were up and down the West Coast in that thing with a twenty five hundred heavy duty gas. Um, and I discovered I hate towing. Um, I hate towing. It's just when it flows and you have to put chains on all the tires because anything I tow is always going to have its own brakes. So any axle that has brakes has to have chains in, in the snow. So um, didn't like it. So sold all that, bought a new truck, bought a truck camper. It goes on the, on the truck. It's got four hydraulic jacks. I go camping. I lift it up and drive the hell out with my truck. If I want to tow a like an extra vehicle i can if i want to tow a ut utility trailer i can if i want to tow a horse trailer i can i can tow your house um because the truck is ridiculous i could tow i think it's like a forty-five thousand pound towing capacity it's ridiculous um but i i just towing sucked and I, and I wasn't comfortable doing it all by myself all the time and so we got this where so we can both drive we can get twice as far um it's great i'm, I'm stoked yeah I know. So I feel like this question is not something that is this or that. I think it depends on your goal with yeah. what you're yeah. doing. Like I know the Laprices have an RV and they love it. And they also have like seven people in there all at one time in an RV. So it's, it's a very big one and it's roomy. <clears throat> um, I know for me, my goal with this glamper was that I can set up a site here and rent it out when I'm not using it. And then I can use it for business trips that that will accommodate that, which saves me paying money on a, an Airbnb. Right. So I wanted a tow behind. So I have my car during, you know, during the day if I want to drive somewhere. And I so that's why I went tow behind. But I can totally see why you do a schoolie like Red Flyer mm -hmm. Media does or something else from a drivability standpoint. And I just sort of resigned myself to I will drive slowly. I won't be able to go on all the roads. And I have oh, you can go on them. <laughs> you <laughs> can. I mean, <laughs> hey, I can go on my road with this. You've seen it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, that's what I was curious how big it was. And what did you say, 20? Well, okay, it was listed as 22 feet. I haven't measured it. I feel like it's 20 feet with a two foot hitch. Yes. And at some point, I'll measure it. But it's a 1972, um, I think it's Coachman or Campman brand. So it's like an old vintage thing. Great insulation. But how, uh, how big is Goals? His is bigger. I think his is like 28 or 30. 
Okay. Yeah, because his, I think his is a little smaller than mine, and his was about as big as you would probably want to take down your road. Yeah, he's been, I mean, he's had it down my road. He's parked it here. Yeah, so. we he was there when we were there, and I was looking. I was like, man, that's, I mean... <laughs> He's he is who he is. I mean, he probably takes a, he probably can take a lot more risk tolerance than I can. Yeah. Well, and we have I mean, you know, you guys we probably could find a place to stick you guys to that wasn't where he was that would be back in a boat. But we I don't think we ever went out the other way. We've only come in that steep way. Oh no, that's the other way. I yeah, I don't think my trailer would make it over that that pitch. No, we have, there's a totally different, yeah, if you ever decide you're coming out here to stay, I will meet you and we will drive you in the way you should drive in so you don't have to do the, the hang off the side of the mountain part of the, of the trip, so. And these, these are things that you figure out along the way that um, you need to ask these questions. That's a good mm -hmm. point um, for, for the RV type or nomad type um, episode is, knowing the way in and figuring it out beforehand and how to do that because it sucks <laughs> you have it to walk sucks <laughs> yeah we always walk and and that's i mean the truck camper you guys has eliminated this problem i it's fine unless it's I can't live in a truck camper though yes you can it has three slides a king oh, bed hey patty yeah i can i really can with three <laughs> <Saint> <laughs> and Corey yes, and everything absolutely. we live in all three slides or do you, have a whole house do you live in also? it would totally fit there so there's two couches. Each each get away. What's, the, what's the height of the roof in it? It's the ceiling. Feet. It's like nine foot. It's nine my feet the whole way. My husband, up. Can, my husband can stand up in it. I can't touch the roof. Okay. I'm I just, just telling you, there's no way that is feasible for me to live in it full time with my dog. How would my dogs get in and out of it? Give me that. There's steps. Just like they don't trailer. do steps. We have ramps. You can put a ramp. Yeah, lots of people have ramps. There's actually a company that makes a ramp for us, so it's accessible. It's no different than a than a tow behind trailer. Patty, how much? How many square foot is your house? My house or my trailer? Your house, because because no my my house and my trailer is the same thing. I have uh, everything not, I own. Do you have everything you own with you? Like I'm a, saying it's not, not a, feasible. It's not a it's not a truck camper that's just like a, a cab over and a. And I know a what your camper is. Okay. I've seen pictures okay. of it. It's the same. It's the same as my tow behind trailer. What's the longest minutes. period of time you spent in it? Um, I longest period of time I spent in the trailer was four weeks. Um, I just got this one, so the longest I've had in this one so far is a week because I just got it. Um, I feel like yeah. you need to come out here for SRF with it. It's a long drive. Oh, <laughs> I, I mean, being a nomad, you could just take your time getting there. Well, the problem is I have a kid in school, so. Some summertime. Yeah, I can't be gone for two weeks. Um, in fact, I just did that. I was gone for nine days and it didn't, it didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it um the the truck camper actually lowers when you when you take it off the truck, it actually lowers right down to where the, the access is um actually is easier. It a hallway? Than, huh? Is it a hallway? No, it's a. It's just the door just opens and there's one step up. No, I'm saying, is there? How wide is it functionality wise? Do you have like a dinette in the in yeah. the slide so that comes out to the side? Number. There's a dinette, and yep. then in the front you go up into the into the bed, and then yeah, on the so other slide. Yep. Yeah, where where do the dogs turn around? Because they're oh, it's a big open floor around. in the middle, big open wide floor in the middle. Um, I can put kayaks and bikes, and there's room for all that. It's it's freakishly large in there, like it's yeah it's it's just like when you go in you're like what, um yeah your dogs could totally turn around in there, but you have three right or two yeah three <laughs> three that are are, are okay. bigger than well, you let's have. talk about this very important nomad slash camping yeah. issue with no, limited space where do you tuck your dogs away that's right yeah so I can I barely get them in the back going, like where do yours go? Where do mine go? On top of me, currently in a in a thirty in a thirty two foot in a thirty foot two foot travel trailer with two slide two slide outs 
and uh, and all the furniture removed. Like we don't have the dinette in it. We took out all the cabinets. We took out everything. We basically have an Ikea table, two chairs and the dogs. Um, yeah. They're everywhere. Uh, they yeah, they're enormous. I yeah, they're we huge. want to so badly go to a 28 foot or smaller and we can't do it. Like we just, there's no physical possible way that the three of them and the two of us can move amongst each other and interact in anything smaller than this. The problem I wonder if the toy hauler solution would be helpful for you, Brian, where it's big open in the back and then the wrap ramp comes did, down. Did you do everything is taken out of this? It is big open as it can get. Yeah. I'm saying if you want to go smaller, they're making smaller toy haulers now. <laughs> I'm saying we have a 32 foot and we gutted it. So we don't have any of the structure yeah. in it. Yeah. So the, oh the, the toy hauler, big open back, we already have yeah. that. But you're and so we the need open, 32 right? feet. But you don't have the flying bed. Right. The flying oh. bed makes the double the floor space. Right. They they used all the floor space. The mattress is on the floor. They get the floor, and then you hang yourself from the ceiling. <laughs> That's I, a I, un I understand the concept. That's fun when you have to pee in the night. I know. It's That's like why it's like bed, I'm like, what if I have to pee? What That's rough like, I don't understand. And go on somebody's head. Like, what do you, you do there? Jump down on a Bernard. I mean, I, I, I took I took two years figuring out how to do this before I actually did it. Um, I've, I've gone over the scenarios. I, I've, I've heard the suggestions. I've made them myself and I've troubleshot them all. And this is what works. And it barely works. I will, I will tell you it barely works. Yeah. So I have two dogs and what has happened here is behind me is a bed that folds up into a couch in theory, but I don't see a reason to ever fold it back up into a couch because I'm sitting at the table right now. Right. And it has created this alcove under the bed. And yeah. immediately one of my dogs claimed that as her spot. And then the other one sleeps in the doorway. So like when I go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, I like hit the dog with the bathroom door to get to it. But that that's where I stick them. Nobody wants to be under this table for some reason. I thought I'd have a dog under the table, but nope. Oh, yeah. Mine sit under my legs. Like yeah. I'm surprised there isn't one under there right now. Um, they find, even though they have the space and we need the space for them to turn around. It's actually the movement. They can't turn around in the narrowest parts of our camper. They have to like run like a train into where the slides outs are to turn around. They just don't bend in half like a human. They don't turn around in circles. Um, they have a radius, a turning radius in the in the space. But they want to be in all the small spaces. They want to go under the table. And yeah, it's, it's something. There's nowhere to get away. Um, like you gotta you gotta understand there's no extra space there's no room to get away there's no um you can go outside i guess but there's nowhere to go there's no room to go sit in there's no kitchen to go cool off in there's there's a bathroom we can go use but man the door is like you might as well not even shut the door <laughs> so it yeah it's it's interesting well, you, you better talk, like the person like, if you're going to do it. I, as I understand it, married couples never fight or disagree about anything ever, right? And they never need time apart from each other. So, you know, okay. Oh, sorry. we do. But yeah, like, how, how do you put that in it when, like, literally you don't have anywhere to go? Like, you're looking at them across your camper. How do you, how do you navigate that part? Um, we call each other on our b bullshit real quick. Uh, like, if you if one of us is being a dick, the other one's pretty much straight out. Hey, um, talk about it or just stop uh, because you can't do it. There's no silent treatment thing that that weird passive aggressive things that couples do in houses where they can just like circulate amongst each other in the house. It doesn't work in this situation. Um, so you just have to you have to like the person to begin with. Uh, Corey and I rarely ever ever fought or anything anyway when we lived in in a house together so we we kind of are a different couple um but you really gotta just understand there's no place to go <laughs> there's there's you ha just have to figure it out you have to talk about it there's no 
there's no mad, being mad at each other and all of that. It's 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 just done because you can't coexist that way in a small space. Jailhouse rules. <laughs> well, I'm it. my camper. I don't have the problems. Squash it fast because it'll just fester and make your life miserable. Yeah. And I just need like a little bit of space. So I've found that this has a, you know, there's a bed over the cab and there's like a little door and it's like the, the bathroom and the kitchen are in the middle. So there's like the bed and over the cab and then the bathroom and the kitchen and then like the living space. So actually it works. Like you can go and just, you know, have some space. We don't, we're not all on top of each other. Like we were in that, in the trailer that I had, I hated that trailer because it was the dinette and the couch were like right next to each other. And the beds were on the ends, but the beds were not in places where you would want to hang out at all. Um, like you couldn't go hang out in the bunk area. It was like really kind of claustrophobic and dark. And then you didn't want to hang out in the bed area either for the same reason. And so this one, one thing that I did, which was really smart, was instead of putting an actual king bed where there's a space for a king bed, I got two um, camping, really nice camping mattresses. I used the Hest um, sleep system, which is almost like a stand-up paddleboard inflatable material on the bottom and then foam above that. So it has a really high insulation value um, because it, the floor gets cold in an RV when it's 10 degrees outside. Um and so I didn't have to insulate that because of the air mattresses. And then during the day they stack. So one person can actually set up an office back there and work back there. And one person can sit at the dinette and work. And we will actually have a solid wood door between us. And it works fantastically. It becomes a playroom, becomes chill space. So I can't be in like an open concept, open concept trailer with another person. I, I, I really, really like the Airstream base camps. I think they're awesome. That's a lot of, that's a lot of close quarters. <laughs> so. I always like the idea, like if you're going to live in a camper on a property and you're the kind of couple that needs space of getting two smaller, less expensive ones. I love that. that you park near each other. If, if that's you need the space, you know, and you can make one like the sleeping one and the awake one or whatever. That's what I thought when I, because I do need space. Like, I, I don't have what, what Brian has where there's another person in here. I could do this with another person. Like, Mama Sauce will probably stay in this with me at some point. But, you know, long term, it would be a little tight. I mean, we have our own rooms. We so we we've slept separate for a long, long time because I do karate and I snore when I sleep. So we just we just kind of that's what we did when we lived in our house. Uh, and when we moved into the camper, we were like, we we can't we can't change just because. So I took like the front bedroom and she took the back bunkhouse and we both gutted them and just made our own spaces. And we can be apart, um, but you're still within. Yeah that much space and we all we both have to cross paths to use the kitchen use our workspace that we use together any like you can get away but you're never away you're really never you can't even when you're outside you can hear you can i can go outside and mumble under my breath and i hear her out the window what the fuck did you say <laughs> yeah I like the idea. I have can hearing until you talk yeah. wildly 100 yards away. <laughs> if you've got a truck camper or an RV that can tow, I saw a setup in one of my groups where it was a truck camper towing a teardrop. And I was like, yes, I've that's seen the some ideal that. setup. That, because my husband as well does karate and snores. So we have separate sleeping spaces. And it's it's worked with the two beds. There's probably about a foot and a half between the beds. And so that's been enough separation. Um, like the snoring is a little much, but I can also like grab my pad and throw it down in front of the fireplace in the front room and it's close the door and it's fine. So I can do, I can do both. Um, but I thought the truck camper towing the teardrop was <laughs> brilliant. I, inter I interviewed a lady that we actually watched her when we were trying to figure out um, 
what we wanted to do and i didn't realize it until she actually was on my show that it was the same person we had been talking back and forth for like two months and i was like holy shit hey how's it going uh, but she had a truck camper and a, a travel trailer like actually a bigger travel trailer they had a truck your size and they had a small tr truck camper uh that they used for an office yeah, and um and then when they wanted to go get away, one of them would want to go get away on a small trip. They would take that. That's I like it. Yep. So what do you use for internet? That's the question from the comments. Um, I have two, two internets. I have, are you uh, happier now with your Starlink or are you just used to the dropout or does it, is it still doing that as much? It depends. It's getting better. Uh, they, they're, it's getting better. Starlink, we are main show as a feature anymore. It's not as bad. It's not as bad. Um, the Starlink, so our main internet is Starlink, but when we started, Starlink wasn't available for, uh, other than stationary. So you couldn't, you couldn't have it as, uh, uh, without a permanent address. So we really spec'd out our camper to start with cellular internet. So basically SIM cards and a internet router and a boosted uh, a boosted antenna on the top. And then within six months of going on the road, uh, we did two test trips before we actually sold our place. Uh, we used the, the cell internet during that time. And then when we launched, um, Starlink became available for camper use or traveling use. And we picked that up and we used that as our main internet. It's it's okay. It's better than the cell internet because we can actually go anywhere that anywhere really that we can cut a hole to get the, the satellite to the sky. We can, we can go where is cell is, is it is where it is it's like Starlink's everywhere. As long as you can get clear sky cellular is only where there's cell towers. Yeah. I I'm not the person to answer this cause I'm not really a nomad. I am on my home internet parked right outside my house. And when I go places, I have a tendency to go places where there is internet that I can tap into. I have cell internet for a backup to send emails, but I wouldn't try to stream a show on that. I think oh, like the oh. thing I'm trying to work out is like, this thing's really big, this mic rig. And it's, I need a smaller, like decent audio studio setup for travel. The, the, Office thing is something we're working on right now um, because I'm starting to do more stuff during the day. I tried to schedule my stuff all around Corey's, uh, her work schedule. And now that I'm doing more stuff during the day, that's audio filming stuff or interviews, this and that we're having to go and migrate because we work together side by side here at a little table. Um, but now that we're both kind of need to be talking at the same time more often, we're, we're kind of moving our offices to the either end um, to each of our sleeping spaces. And we might actually have a um, co-living, not work area in the middle uh, together where it's not just like where we spend every minute of our time. We might work on the ends and then come into the, the middle when we're done. But to come. Yeah. I mean, I could see, I could actually see some really cool designs you could do where you could fold up the bed and it becomes a desk. Yeah. Like, yeah. We're, we're kind of limited. I'm in the front of the camper. So the way it's set up, it has the underbelly storage and the bed was kind of on top of that. And then there was a platform there for the rest of the bed. Well, I took the the platform for the queen bed out and just put a, a, a full or bigger as a custom mattress on the width. It, it runs side to side. So then I have that big open space to kind of messed with. But it's also like a pass through. It's got two doors. So the dogs, when they go in, they don't have enough room to turn around in there currently. So they have to go in one and out the other. So if one's blocked, they kind of freak out and get all nervous and then make a big mess and trample all over things. Uh, so you got to kind of keep the circle open. And if I start putting desks and flip up things, then the dogs get stuck. <laughs> yeah, you have the extra challenge of the giant three dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead on your internet, Patty. Oh, so we had that 
We have a T-Mobile hotspot we were using with the Wii Boost, where you put up the big antenna um, outside of it. And it, that thing was outrageously expensive. And I tell you what, it was never consistent. Um, it sometimes worked, sometimes it wouldn't. And it was just like, ah, screw this. So we did just, we're going to be doing a lot more nights in the camper this year. And, and boy, I tell you, Washington is, you just drive over a ridge and that's it. You're, there's just nothing. So, um, but it's usually a ridge and you're, you've got a clear shot to the sky. And, and so we're going to try Starlink and it's going to be here Friday. So, um, we will have a full report using that on mountains in Washington in the next month or so, because, um, we have, we actually missed out on camping weekends and weeks, um, since we got the new camper in June, because neither one of us can, from a work perspective, be offline for that long. We just can't, um, we just we can't we can't be gone so um we uh, will have a lot more flexibility once we can at least get a text message out you know yeah I, I, nighthawk has a starlink and i i was working on my duplex this year in nashville it was great to have that just to throw a starlink out and then have internet in the evenings when the construction was over yeah and then i was in east nashville so then bring it in at night so it didn't get stolen Right. Because I had to put it like the place it worked best was the middle of the front yard by the road. Oh. <laughs> it is kind of like, it is kind of where it is where you got to be. Sometimes you just got to put it yeah. where it is. Yeah. And um, a lot of the times I just rely on the fact that people won't be able to do anything with it if they steal it. Like, it's, it's kind of serious. It's got a serial number in it. It's not like you can steal it and just uh, bootleg. It. I guess you could break hack it or, but I don't know if people are, are they stealing Starlink satellites? I don't know. I just think they don't know where I'm, where I am. It's, it would be an opportunistic thing. They may not know what it is, but they'd be like, maybe I can sell this. You yeah. Know? I, uh, we also like to like it for uh, emergency calls because if I don't have cell signal, I can figure out how to get Starlink. I have enough battery backup. I have enough um, battery power that I could go mobile with it, the router and the satellite to where I, even if it's heavy tree cover, I could go find and walk someplace that has open sky. Uh, and with no cell signal, I can use Wi-Fi call in with my internet to make a call if I don't have signal. Like we got stuck in rural Colorado with no cell signal. And if nobody had driven by in a while, I was going to fire up the Starlink and use Wi-Fi calling to get a hold of somebody to come and help us. So how do you figure out what to keep in your life and what not to keep in your life with a, such a small space? Um, I love uh, that noise. That was a good one. <laughs> um, yeah, what you use, I guess. Um, things you use that have multiple purposes. Um small things <laughs> memories are really good for pictures uh, and pictures are good for digital media that don't take up a lot of space um i don't need to physically hold on to everything from my childhood if i take a picture of it i can put it on a flash drive and i can put a million pictures on there um tools i thought i needed more than i did i'm very resourceful uh, after being a technician for so long i realized that i can make things work uh, so I don't need everything. I can figure it out at some point. Multi-purpose things. You got to realize what space you have. We were both limited by space and weight um, because of the dogs. Like we literally have over 500 pounds of, of cargo that is alive animals. And then we carry another over 100 pounds of feed for them at most times. So we have over 600 pounds of our total weight is animal and animal feed. So we really got screwed on the space to weight ratio. So we have to take light things, multi-purpose things, and things that really mean anything to us. I think we kept one memorabilia thing, and it was a quilt from our wedding. Which has a use, right? If we need it, yeah. It, um, if we took it out with these dogs, it would be ruined in, in like 10 minutes because of the slobber and the dirt and the hair. <laughs> I but, yes, it, but yes, it is It is it's something useful. And it was, uh, it was the one thing. We had two or three things in a pile uh, before we left that we were going to keep as memories. I guess we have a couple of little frame things, but they're just decorations for the camper. They don't take up any space. 
but uh we ended up just settling on the one we make made the call really it was it was space wise patty how do you make decisions about what goes in your camper um this is harder now because the old trailer had a just a shitload of cargo room and this one is we've downsized a little so um it has to be stuff that I I don't like unitaskers. You know, it's got to be multi-use. I try and get things that are collapsible, like the kitchen. All my kitchen stuff is marine, um, meant for boats, um, boat galleys, so it all nests. It's all collapsible. Um, as far as that, if I were to sell the house and go full-time nomad, um, I would keep... So I already kind of had to do this when I moved into a tiny 400-square-foot house in Burbank. Um, so I've already done this once, but, um, I usually keep like a box of photos that I can't, that aren't digital that I can't reproduce. Um, and the rest of it, unless I'm using it all the time, it gets sold. I mean, I just don't like getting attached to stuff. I have a lot of stuff. I'm not super attached to it. Hmm. How about you, Brian? Tell me. Right. I mean, you, you've lived in your van, right? I've On lived trips? Oh, yeah, yeah. I road trip like the mother. Uh, but I go through, I mean, I don't bring anything. <laughs> that, you know, he, the showed, whole he showed up in Tennessee for SRF and he rolled into the campsite. And I looked at it, the car he was driving and I'm like, how long a trip was this? He's like, oh, like two and a half weeks. <laughs> like, perfect. <laughs> You don't. Oh, oh, all our all our stuff has to be able to be stowed too. Was something that I I remember. So we have to be able to secure it um, into a cabinet or in its space because when you travel with a trailer, it is chaos in the back. Rolling um, our pitch. Okay, yeah. so like the real things to bring, like air pumps. Like, yep. I got air compressor. Batteries for your air pump so you can run that motherfucker extra for a while. Extra fuses. You uh, must have at least one complete set of extra fuses. Why why wouldn't you just why would you bring air batteries for an air pump? Why wouldn't you just get a 12 volt air pump and run it off either your pump car pump or your air Because all my Ryobi 18 volt shit is like that. So like the the pumps, the lights, the radio, the bulls up there. Like it does like 18 jobs. Plus I have a backup one that runs the same batteries under the other seat. Cause why not? And then a tire patch kit, like literally the rubber thing, the mauler and the popper. Yeah. Or the, the fix. Like when I got to Tennessee with C and Brian, there was a screw in my front tire when I left Seattle that I was like, interesting, but I'm on a schedule. So I'm off. I just left it in there. But when I got down there, it was still in there. And when I got home, then I fixed it in my driveway. Like, if it had blown at any point or started leaking air, I didn't give a shit. I just pulled over. And so, okay. And the other thing that I carry is not the shitty jack from the factory, whatever. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> in that I haven't looked. Like, a floor jack. A real floor jack. It's not that hard. Not that hard. Like yeah, A real one. Yeah, Costco yeah. has them. It, it I, I would disagree with the floor jack. I would go more with the bottle jack. The floor jack um, can, in situations where you're going to pull your trailer, you can't always get a floor jack under a trailer or under a truck with flat ground or stable enough ground. You can always secure the bottom of a bottle jack and make it work. True, but within a half mile of walking around in my flip-flop sandals, I guarantee you I'm going to find an eight-foot tree limb and a block, and I'm going to make a lever, and rah, the boat goes up, then goes under. So, yeah, no, yeah. The, the no, I'm, just, the I'm saying, the, yeah, no, I'm saying you're going to, you, a lot of the, the excavating, your, your, a lot of use of your jack is less tires and more getting your shit unstuck. Um, and you think in weight terms, right? So that's why you're going bottle jack. And I think in like, ah, it's just me and my cruiser car. So I'm going to put in like, because then I can help other people. I can lift crazy heavy shit. I can use it for a lot of things. But anyway, yeah, yeah. That's can you like lift your car up with that if you got it in the center and like spin it? You probably could. You could probably put a two by 12 across there or four by I think four you could in. try it. <laughs> You want to make a video? I think that make a video. Yeah, I think that is absolutely necessary to be videoed. Yep. We're gonna use it put up there and spin it like a top. Yeah, oh my that god! Hilarious. Oh, I made a macrame video the other day. 
of how to hang a plant hanger, 9,000 hits in like four hours or some That's shit. That's wild. Any real useful information like crickets. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, that's just how that goes. Yeah, I love AI. That's amazing. I love you, AI. Do you hear me? I love you. That's me scrambling. <laughs> so something my uncle told me this year, because I had a, another uncle die, and I showed up in town, and I was talking about packing, and he's like, you know what makes my life easier than your life? And I was like, what? He's like, I have complete and utter faith that anything I need, I can buy right now. And I was like, this changes everything for me. You are a hundred percent right. Like if I am, you know, like if I need an extra jacket, I can just go buy an extra jacket. I don't necessarily have to always bring the extra jacket. Now, if I know I'm going into a snow zone, totally bring in all my good gear. Right. But Thrift store, two dollar jacket. If I'm, if I'm oh taking this thing to the Midwest preparedness project, which is totally happening. And it ends up that it's suddenly really cold and I didn't see it coming. Like, I can get it. Or if it's too hot and I need shorts, I can go to Walmart and get shorts. 100%. Can, or you can cut your pants off and make them short pants. Also that. <laughs> oh, be careful. I saw that go horribly wrong once on a Boy Scout hike. <laughs> Not while well, they're on about it. Tell, this sounds like a good story. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, we learn. Oh, yeah, yeah. You learn not to play with fire when you almost burn a forest down. So this kid decides he's going to cut jeans off while they're on him and being good scouts fucking sharp big ass buck knives so he gets the first leg off no problem he's doing the second leg and he comes to the inside where it's stitched and you're really going to put some muscle to get through the stitching oh, no. other inside leg like almost gets his fucking artery like oh that's what meat looks like squirt 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 oh yeah we got to practice everything <laughs> the it was like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Building the little skitter, putting the pressure on it, stopping the bleeding, calling the shit. Oh yeah, that was that was pre cell phone. Someone had to like run. Oh yeah, that was that was a fun day. <laughs> yeah, Anything? Rebecca Media says I have to hit thrift shops regularly when traveling on a motorcycle and running into unexpected bad weather. Yeah. And then you just let the thing go because you got the rain slicker for two bucks. So off she goes. And you didn't have to have the Chinese factory build one more because you went to 7 Eleven. It's what Brian. You, well, it's other Brian. Brian, our 7 yeah. Elevens have those. That Do you care them. about like, you know, more plastics in the environment? Okay. If, if if you're like, fuck it, just go buy new shit all the time. Throw it away. If you're like, hey, there should be less of that. It already exists somewhere. Go get it cheap and then throw it away. And there will be less of it. If you care. Fair enough. Yeah. Choices, right? I didn't know they made rain slickers in Chinese factories. I didn't know they sold them at 7-Eleven. Oh, I mean, they have ponchos, That's probably. Where I was like, what? what? Why are Go we in the to... Circle K or I Mac or West Coast. whatever. I was, I was thinking more Chinese like coke. truck stop, but truck stops yeah. have everything, just so you everything. know. Usually yeah. they have a laundry mat, they have showers, they have all the essentials that anybody would need as a nomad, because basically a truck driver is a nomad. So if you, if you oh, think where they need yeah. to go and where they stop, they have everything you need, so. They have it all at a premium, though, because right. you can't back that truck in anywhere. So, so how does having it. a camper or living this way like increase freedom? How does it increase freedom? Yep. Um, For you. <laughs> I, I mean, I can really go where I want to go and do what I want to do. Um, I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. Uh, when we actually sold our house and we had nowhere to go and nowhere to be and it was it was terrifying and exciting at the same time because for years we had been driving towards goals and trying to do hit hit things like on our homestead and now we just get to do what i don't want to say what we want whenever we want but we can make plans as we see fit at the time so we can kind of explore different options explore different areas of the country and um yeah that's how it's increased freedom 
uh, we can move. We can move when we want, where we want, and, and kind of make it work however we need to. As we get better at doing this, it gets easier and easier. Patty, how is how is your camper like increasing your freedom? Yeah. So um, I always kind of jokingly thought about it as my mobile house and my mobile bug out vehicle. Um, I didn't realize how important that was to the mindset of increasing freedom until I sold it and was in the period in between not having one. What I realized was no, no matter what happens, I live by railroad tracks. If the railroad derails and we got to evacuate right now, two seconds. If, you know, if I don't have, if the power's out, I can get in the camper and drive to where there's power. If there's some like breakdown of the area or natural disaster, I can probably drive out. If there's a huge loss of income and we're like, damn, we can't afford a mortgage anymore, we have a backup plan. So I think having the fallback allows you, I, I think it allows me to take a little bit more risks sometimes because there's a backup position. Um, and without that, I think I would be a lot more nervous. Yeah. How about you it's funny you say the power. Uh, well, we watch the neighbor's lights to tell if the power goes out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's like they're all out of power. <laughs> like, yeah. holy shit, the power's out. I didn't know. Oh, shit. And even we're, we're, I mean, we're set up to go park in the middle of nowhere for yeah. two weeks at a time. So, and our house, house, our sticks and bricks house, we have a generator and all that stuff. But honestly, if the power's out, I'd rather just go be in my camper because it's a smaller space to heat, it's more efficient. And I don't want to run lights when everybody else is out of power, honestly. <laughs> All right. So I'm thinking about this totally <clears throat> more hub and spoke, right? I travel light because I go from hub to hub. I just travel along the spokes. I'm not nomadic like that. I don't hang out in spoke land, <laughs> hub to hub, right? You don't need a bunch of stuff because there's stuff at hubs if you don't spend time in the middle. So that my whole nomadic existence is I know people everywhere that are like, come see on my couch. So I'm always within an hour of somebody who would want me to stay on the couch. So you don't have to bring a bunch of shit. I don't think about bringing a bunch. I don't flip flop. But you know what, Brian, room. when you showed up, when you showed up at, at my place, you had everything you needed. You needed nothing from us. You didn't need it. No, you, no, 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 no. you didn't need any food. You didn't need any water. You didn't need a shower. You didn't need a toilet. You didn't need anything. Nope. Have my I mean, electronic you, shower that runs you, off you the You might have brought somebody that was a little dependent with you, but you <laughs> yourself, like if I independently evaluate uh, the person that you were and, and, the, and what drain you would have put on me, it was nothing. So it's not a crash on the couch. It's a, a place to park more than anything. No, no, I got a hammock. I love sleeping in that thing. Yeah, yeah. And I can try, I can find a place to hide that car. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's not, yeah, not whatever you're going to roll with. You should be super comfy with that. Like, yeah, whatever makes you comfy, do that. It doesn't, yeah. It, you know, if you spend time building a network, yeah, you're always one trip away from somewhere. The biggest, the biggest thing, Nicole asked earlier how I decided what, what, what I needed and how to get down to it. And I think what he was talking about travel and light and everything, I realized that when we got to Texas, when we did our second, pur second purge, it was because I had actually finally realized that the shit doesn't matter. The stuff doesn't matter. The stuff doesn't make you happy. It doesn't make you valuable. It doesn't make you, um, it may be make you valuable. It may be make, because you spent a lot of fucking money on the stuff. Um, it's, barterable. It you valuable. it's barterable or whatever. It has value, but that's not what gives you value. Um, and I was always in this really stricken place as a prepper, uh, getting rid of my stuff. Um, and I realized my stuff is here. My stuff is here. Um, and if I need to get more stuff, I can figure it out or I can work my ass off and get it again uh, or pay for it or figure out how to get it. Uh, it. It doesn't have to be tangible to be prepared. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I know for me, like how this camper relates to freedom is it's it's going to be adding to my independence fund by generating revenue for my property. That's and... So and from a financial standpoint, 
when I travel and can use this instead of paying for lodging somewhere or paying as much for lodging somewhere, I have everything I need. And it, you know, it costs less. And then that that's less on my bottom line. So for me, it's a, it's a financial freedom to it's more, it's more comfortable too. When you go and stay in your own place, when you go, oh, more yeah. 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 So Bane's not going through your stuff, you know, like yeah. ah, you're not an Airbnb, yeah. you're not a hotel, you not feel like, uh, you know, it's unless mean. you know the people and, and that you're staying at their place, but then it's still somebody else's place. Like I bring my house with me. I just, yeah. I just need a place to park it. I'm good. I, yeah, I, exactly. I, I, I really need... places to save time, but I mean, there's definitely it for when I looked at the financial impact of it, I was like, this is way less money than paying a hundred bucks for a hotel or whatever, 200 bucks, depending where you are. And, and if you're renting it, you will keep it clean and perfect. Yeah. Right. Because they're going to leave reviews and you won't let one thing go. It'll just yeah. Airbnbs are like that. Yeah. Yes, they are. So, and 12 totally days on hotel nights. I mean, that's how we start. The, the, the trailer idea got started was we were spending <laughs> like two to three weeks in Yosemite every year. And your choice was a tent or they're like hotel rooms, which are <laughs> about Motel 6 quality for $350 a night. And it was just astronomical. And we were like, we can get a trailer and camp here for $45 a night and camp here for three weeks. And that's and that's what we did. And those were some of our longest trips because we could just haul out to Yosemite, work from there. There was Wi-Fi. Um, and these people were spending $350, $400 a night for these awful little under me. If you use a trailer, yeah. it's, it's, it's such a deal. Oh, I had it at the horse show in October. I this is was the truck camper's first time at a horse show, and um, that was great. It was like thirty five dollars a night. Uh, the closest hotel was fifteen twenty minutes away, and was probably almost three hundred dollars a night, just because it's out in the boonies and they can, and it's horse show people, so they will. And I slept, you know, hundred. Yeah, I, I I slept, you know, a hundred foot from the ponies, and my trailer just or my trainer would just text me and say, "I need you to get on at eleven thirty, and I just wander over it was awesome that's a good ask me how i know don't ever get a hotel room for less than 100 ask me how i know okay <laughs> more than one night at a super eight hearing somebody get beat up outside my door yes i know oh my god have you have you ever been in a hotel room and turned the shower on and had all the tiles fall off the wall no oh. <sighs> Just you, you know those shower heads that are like uh they feel like when they hit you they'll like burn a hole through you it's just like one solid stream of all the pressure yep. uh, i was i we used to go up to niagara falls canada when i was in college and find the cheapest hotel room so we could spend more at the casino and the nudie bars um and the place we stayed one night we turned the shower on in the morning so hung over and it you turned it away from because you were like basically sitting in the shower on the toilet so you turned the shower head away and it hit the wall and all the tiles on the whole wall just crashed into the bathtub and i'm like i took a shower i stood on the towels or on the tiles and i took a shower i was so hung over i just had to like get cleaned up <laughs> i was like but yeah the, we told the guy at the desk we went to check out we're like hey all the tiles fell off he goes again <laughs> He put him back with Elmer's glue. There wasn't a lot of mortar in that mortar. Oh, I mean, it was like a, a, a water pick coming out of the shower head. It was just like. <sighs> yeah. That sounds uncomfortable. What could be yeah. causing that? Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh talking shit. about. Oh, hey, I had another uh, idea after uh, helping that neighbor with his well pump. So he's the Tesla guy. He tells me that uh, the power company out there were co-op. It's the cheapest power in the U.S. per kilowatt. And they haven't gone to uh, time of day yet. Mm -hmm. But he put, a, he put a dual power box in just so we'd have two meters. So each car will have its own meter so that each bill will start from, from zero and go up. So I found my power man. So now... That Wrangler Star video from two or three days ago where he had that Power Power Plus Pro, mm -hmm. like the two of them would make the 240, right? Screw paying six or nine thousand to hook up, spend nine thousand, get three of those 
always have one at neighbor's house plugged in, paying him the cheap rate, right? I never get hooked up. I build my whole place so it just has the plug for the Power XZ. Dual. Boom. I got 240 amp whole house power for the off grid cabin. And I always oh, yeah. got have someone who can wire that up for you. <laughs> well, no, I'm you just going to wire that. You just wire the house like normal. This yeah. is a normal house. And coming off the box, you just put the female plug for yep. the coming out of the extra to hold you up. And then when I leave to come back to my house house, the power XEs come with me. There's nothing to steal in the woods. All the wiring's in the walls, in the in the concrete. I mean, they can't can't even rip it out because it's inside the concrete walls. <laughs> so there's nothing to steal. Right. Oh, there's no juicy parts of the system to leave in the woods. And then future future, throw some uh, solar panels down in the field where it's really sunny and build a brick pump house with a steel door where you put the power XC that's charging off the solar panels inside this brick steel door lock yeah. pump house. And then I swear this whole, this whole thing, it's like you guys have been rattling off songs. And in my head, she's a brick. Okay, go ahead. That's what's really happening in here. But no, Brian, after listening to your RV, all the wiring and all the all the complexity of it, and then just listening to him the other day show those two live how easy it was to just take an old house on AC and just solar generator it. Like, okay, and those are big enough now to have enough power to run a See? real thing. My my mind is just a, a, a it's a manifestation of what I had to do to the camper to convert it from from shore power to to solar. The easiest route was to take the DC, store it in DC, convert it to AC, feed it into the camper, and use the onboard. Like we're going DC to AC to DC, but the the power loss was so minimal that it didn't matter on the size of my system. It was just of, I didn't need to tear all the wiring out of my camper. I just used the power sort, the power uh, box that was in there and then added a new input. Well, shit's getting better. I mean, they didn't have this stuff five years ago. That's all like plug and play, 240 red. Just like I was talking to someone about yeah. a, a mini split that runs solely on, on solar. Sean was just talking about that the yeah, other day. I haven't listened to it. For one of those. Straight, straight solar straight input. Solar. So yeah. it's just off if it's not on. Because mm -hmm. they sip energy. They don't take much to run. Not anymore. Mm. Not mm. anymore. Uh, the, our mini split that we just put in here that I had in a box for 10 years, we finally installed it. We have to leave it on the lowest setting or it sweats you out. You like, can't leave it on overnight. So we, yeah. It, it's as low as it can go. So, yeah, it's going to it halved our electric bill for heat this year. So yeah. That's pretty good. Mini split. Is, oh, that's yeah. what I have in the roasting shack. There's a mini split going in there, too. Well, and we're, yeah. I mean, we're limited to roof space for panels. I mean, I guess, I guess we can bring. Here I have that thing. Uh, yeah, those are yeah. awesome, aren't they? Yeah. You um, that might be from 1972. It probably is. Panels are getting really like that. Uh, that 400 watt fold out. Yeah, yep. soft panels of those things. They're getting. They're getting. I mean, price is coming down. I think the glass ones I'm seeing now for like 34 cents a kilowatt. Getting better. Like buying bulk. So, we did three three panels on the roof and then one loose panel so that if we happen to be parked somewhere that was a little shadier than we liked we could run we could put the one out like in front of the truck yeah it was nice yeah we got three or we have four 330s and i'm pre-wired to do two more kickers if i want i just don't have the panels or a desire to have them because we don't we haven't we don't need them. you haven't needed it yet no we have the yeah. generator that we put um a propane conversion in so we just hook it up to the propane with the with the camper if we're short on power a day uh we just top off the batteries with the generator on propane yeah you were talking about that this morning right just like just run propane 
like yeah, it's, yeah. it's never had gasoline in the generator once i just run it off propane it's so clean um you take the engine apart and it's just like pristine still there's no <laughs> I mean, there's nothing it, it runs easier it's a little less efficient it's quieter and the exhaust doesn't smell yep There's lots of reasons to do propane yeah <laughs> and i don't have to carry gas in my truck yeah also, right, yeah. propane is strapped to the camper. Well, and you yeah. made that outdoor shower, didn't you? With the outdoor uh, showers, the, propane with the the propane water heater. Somebody just sent me that link this morning. There, it was down to like one hundred twenty-seven dollars. Yeah, like, well, yeah. Well, I think so we got it at one hundred and nineteen dollars for an on-demand propane heater and um, a pop-up tent for ninety-nine dollars. That might be a Black Friday, like waiting to pass. Yeah, those pop-up cans on sale. It changed my life because um, six five in a shower in a camper shower doing military showers doesn't work yeah. well. And the minute I got to take an outdoor shower was like, changed my life. That's what she's like. I'll come play in the woods as soon as you make me a hot shower. As long as I want. I'm like okay, okay. And all you need, you don't need, you don't need I'm much sure. pressure at all for that. Right, because uh, it, it'll it, it sucks it up the tube, right? Or no, you, 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 need water pressure. Pressure. you do need water pressure, so you need positive pressure. Oh, it's, so it's up, to, but it's only up to six six liters a minute. So a little it's flow not, jet on a twelve volt. They yeah, make one, crap. Ryan. It's um, gosh darn it, it's a, a Julka. They make one where you just two. throw the end in the lake. I got you two in the, the end of my and... motor pile. <laughs> yeah, they're great. <laughs> the two flow jets ready to go. <laughs> And a hot tub. That was the other request. So yeah. Hot okay, guys, we're gonna go make cornbread soon. How are we gonna wrap this one up? Oh yeah. We oh, should I gotta go make cornbread too. Yeah, cornbread. It's gonna be chestnut dressing, which I'm bringing to the thing tomorrow. Oh, that's right. It's the night before. Holy shit. I gotta do the cookie hey, thing. It's DUI we're night, guys. It's, oh yeah. yeah. Don't go drinking. Yeah. 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 Safety tip. Stay off the road. Oh, I got I mine uh, 20 Bartender. years ago today, I think, or 23 years ago tonight after oh, yeah. a work shift. What'd you get? DUI. DUI, yeah. Night before I Thanksgiving, you, you get to spend a little time drinking in drinking two years ago, so I can totally have a bourbon tomorrow. Because he's driving. <laughs> yeah, Good perfect. job. Perfect. That's my plan. Dun, perfect. Dun, dun. I oh, water. oh, somebody asked about water, water real quick. I get hung over, so it's like I can't. Oh, have water. Oh, yeah. Oh, somebody somebody asked about water. water real quick. Uh, oh, yeah. Pilot, Berkey, or uh, some water filtration system. We have an extra 75 gallon tank in the back of my truck that I can use and pump water into, pump water out of, and jerry cans. Same. Jerry cans. That's a great idea. Exactly. I haven't figured out the water thing. I am in no way ever going to haul this thing with water in its water tank. Okay. Because it's full or empty, neither in between. Right. Yeah. If it's right. full, it, it's good. It, it actually gives you a little bit more stability on the road because it's over the axles and actually gives you a little bit. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. But half full um, is the worst because it's washing. Yeah. So full, full or empty. Okay, and I was just trying to. I don't want to have a bunch of weight in here. That's my thought. So, my plan is to have water in the car and to go places where I can fill, and then empty before I leave. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, gas stations. Uh, there's a couple of cool little to gadgets you can grab that can help you get water when the faucets aren't really water faucets to, for the public. Uh, I found Claire's have like drinkable Ooh, that water. That sounds like a fun little blog post uh, right there. Host pipe, like <laughs> water bandits. Water, water bandits, uh, church keys for all sorts of different kind of uh, faucets that don't have nozzle or uh, yeah. twisty or things on threads. them. Yeah. And then any pilot has water at the truck RV lanes. Yeah. Uh, it's for them, for the radiators cleaning their trucks. You can use that to fill your tanks. Don't worry. Drive your shit through. Don't do it when it's busy because truckers will get like really this. upset with you and probably run you off the road. But <laughs> it is there. Uh, it seems like a lot of loves now have them on the gas side too. On the gas, uh, on the gas side, they have a, a water spigot. So, yep. Hey, free water, man. And they make a. Um, I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna go to a rectangular. I have a water barrel that we were using, which was fine when we could drop it in the back of the truck and tow a trailer. It's kind of where do I put it now that the camper is on the truck. So I have a hitch basket I can put it in. 
Um, but I think we're going to go to one of those square, um, they're like the thick plastic, but they're rectangular and they can slide between the bed of the truck and the camper. So I'm going to do that. You use more than you think. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm a water hog. Like if I if I know I have access to water and can refill, I'm a water hog. If I yeah. if I know I can't refill, I I know I can do it correctly, but I'd rather not. <laughs> so that pitcher right there is a gallon. That gets emptied every day just in my coffee machine. Oh yeah. <laughs> my dog. Drinks well, there's like more than one person gallon. using my coffee machine, but that thing is it was it was full this morning. It's half empty now. We do. That's the, that's another thing with the dogs is like six and a half gallons of water a day, at least. Sure. Yeah. Two Berkeys. <laughs> Gotta have a water plan. Yeah. I haven't gotten a Berkey for here, but I'm going to get, I want to get a smaller one than what you have, but yeah, I haven't figured out which Berkey. The little one's we, great. We I, I, have the, <laughs> I have the we, big one you have. And then I have the little one for the camper that I actually yeah. won from a full-time RV YouTube channel where I know that I actually know them. I used to do firearms instructing with them in California and I entered one of their drawings and won the smaller one. So now I have a camper Berkey and a. It does a camper Berkey keep up with three people. Uh, you have to make sure you do both. Like don't just put one filter in it. Yeah. Um, if you have two, it's like two or three filters. Yeah. If you have all three filters in it and just keep an eye on it, it does. You yeah. just keep refilling vessels or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I refill it probably once or twice a day. It's not awful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless you're cooking. And then you're like, ugh. We, we literally empty it into jugs and fill it just constantly. Yeah. We keep six gallons available and and just rotate it through. And sometimes we get behind where we get down to one gallon and we're like, holy shit. Um, <laughs> but it's nice oh, for no, the, cooler, the cooler weathers, they drink lots less. So that's nice. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy <laughs> yeah, order coffee from Nicole or I, but order some yeah. fucking coffee. It's Go Christmas on. time. Order coffee from us both. We could do that Christmas package again if you want. Oh, yeah. Stop it's drinking best. shitty coffee. Yeah, yeah don't you know what? And drink I just had to fix my roaster though, Brian. Like it just got back up and running. It's been out down since Sunday. <laughs> I needed a part and I Thank God I ordered two of the, the part I needed. Because I was like, yes. I know, I'll just order two now since I'm playing the overnight fee to get the stupid part. And it's oh. not any more money. And I put it in and it didn't work. And I called them and I'm like, why doesn't oh, this work? God. They're like, because it's broken, apparently. Send it back. And I'm like, well, thank God I ordered two. And we put the second one in and it worked. Oh, my yeah. God. My luckiest day ever. Yeah. <laughs> Coffee right. roasted. Yeah. See, that's why you guys got to order some coffee. Come yeah, on, order it. Order it. I got to pay off that overnight air bill from Georgia. And Brian's got some new cool shit on the. How, however, you got that on your YouTube channel, I love it. I just twenty two bucks for that fucking drinking mug, though. I'm her, but maybe I will. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Do it. I don't set the prices. I mean, I I guess I can. Uh, I can't find it in the settings. Yeah. The coffee mugs are super reasonable. I'm like, oh, those are great, but I got a thousand coffee mugs. I want a pint glass. So I was like, oh, the pint glass with the Bitcoin wallpaper on it is. Fantastic. Yeah, the Bitcoin wallpaper pint glass. So anyway, go see Brian's shop too. Yeah, and check it out. Legal <laughs> advice or contract. Buy from, buy from all of us. All right. <laughs> right. I think I put our clicky things in the description, so you our can get to all. Of us. Clicky yeah. things are important. Hey, I'm a producer. Come on. <laughs> Come listen to me rant about legal contracts. Yep. Yeah. Mm. You have some good rants. I got to do another one this week. I'm going to try and do one rant per week. That's, that's, oh, that's a good goal. achievable goal. Yeah. <laughs> University I melt down at least once a week on my show. Yeah, that's yeah. perfect. True. At All least. Right. That's enough of this. <laughs> oh, All right, geez. guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy we'll Thanksgiving. Bye. 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 Bye.